सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली The James Webb Space Telescope is humanity's shining jewel in the sky right now. It has opened its eyes and is sending us data back. And what we are seeing through infrared imagery is stunning to say the least. We have never seen pictures in this level of detail before of such far away objects. Here's a recent one that of the Cartwheel Galaxy 500 million light years away. and here's what it looked like when hubble imaged the same galaxy the difference is striking this is of course thanks to webb's suite of really powerful infrared instruments but we're not going to go into the instruments right now we've already discussed how the telescope works and some explanation for those astounding set of first images and the videos for those are linked below in this video we're going to talk about something else that webb is doing which is peering back into time barely a few days since its first science operation astronomers have already started submitting papers to journals about galaxies seen in this data and this especially has to do with detecting the oldest galaxies that we've ever seen some are astoundingly old so old that in fact they were likely some of the first few galaxies that ever formed after the big bang and of course we have images too all of them are in a single image so how exactly is web looking back in time and what are astronomers seeing when they look through this data and how different is it from what they expected to see this is the picture that started most of what we're going to be talking about today this is called web's first deep field image and it is the first operational science image taken by the telescope It's a composite and it shows a piece of sky that is just the size of a grain of sand but contains thousands of galaxies. Every dot here is a galaxy except the ones with spikes of light, those are stars. In this image we can see a number of bendy orange galaxies as well. These are actually way behind the other bright ones that are in the image. The total gravity of the galaxy cluster that is in front closer to us acts as a gravitational lens amplifying the light from far away galaxies behind them bending the light astronomers all over the world got access to this image and its data after it was made public and immediately they started detecting the most mind boggling things from this specific image such as how it actually shows that the galaxy cluster recently collided with another one and is just reforming but a flurry of papers started to be submitted by scientists specifically about the oldest and the most distant galaxies ever observed first there were 10 galaxies that were discovered which were the oldest that we've ever seen these papers are all preprints which means they are not peer reviewed yet and these are candidate galaxies they still need to be confirmed but all the data indicates that this is indeed our first look at some of the oldest galaxies that have ever existed initially astronomers were discovering one or two or 10 galaxies which were the oldest that we've ever seen but with every passing day the record is being broken from the same data dump one study found 44 new galaxies at 300 million years after the big bang This breaks Hubble's record of the most distant galaxy that was dated to 400 million years after the Big Bang. Then astronomers noticed a pair of galaxies that were even farther. Distance of light sources in cosmology can be quantified by measuring the spectrum's redshift. The higher the number of this redshift denoted by z, the farther away the galaxy. Redshift is equivalent to the Doppler effect. as a source of light moves away from us its spectrum becomes red shifted whereas when a galaxy is moving towards us or a star or any light source its spectrum becomes blue shifted so when we look at older distant objects we look at their red shift the higher the number of this red shift the farther the galaxy 
These pair of galaxies had a redshift of 13. But later in July, papers submitted to the archive preprint server started throwing up some even older galaxies. A galaxy with the redshift of 14 was reported, which puts it under 300 million years after the Big Bang. It's a fairly massive galaxy and is called Maisie's Galaxy after the lead astronomer's daughter. In fact, just up until two weeks ago, astronomers had no idea that such massive galaxies could exist so early on after the formation of the universe. And of course, it doesn't just stop with Maisie's Galaxy. Astronomers have also detected galaxies at a redshift of 16, which would put it just 250 million years after the Big Bang. Even now, if we Google when the first galaxies were formed and look at earlier results before the launch of the Webb telescope, we can see astronomers and even NASA's official site that explains the Webb telescope saying that we expected massive galaxies to form a billion years after the Big Bang. We think some small galaxies started to form about 400 million years after the Big Bang. This was the prevalent conventional wisdom. And now, merely a couple of weeks after the release of first set of data from Webb, we can see that we have really massive galaxies going back to a mere 250 million years after the Big Bang. In fact, astronomers have since detected galaxies even farther away with redshifts of up to 20. And going forward, it is likely that astronomers will discover more and more older galaxies that formed closer and closer in time to the Big Bang. The analysis of the spectra of these light sources reveals even more about the composition of these early galaxies and their structure. Some very distant galaxies that formed very early on are actually quite rich in oxygen, which is extremely surprising. A star has to first burn out hydrogen, fuse it to helium, and then this helium fuses in its core, forming carbon, and then carbon fuses creating nitrogen and oxygen and so on. So it actually takes a very, very, very long time for stars to start producing oxygen. Our own sun is still fusing hydrogen. We generally think that these early galaxies are still too young, but this data indicates that their stars have already gone through these stages, making these galaxies oxygen rich. That is astounding and requires us to understand more about stellar evolution. Many early galaxies seen in Webb's data are disk shaped and irregular. Some data seems to indicate that massive galaxies started forming earlier in our universe than later, and the later ones are surprisingly smaller. This contradicts everything that scientists know about galactic evolution. The Hubble data of these galaxies at 3 billion years after the Big Bang, which was when the universe was at its peak of star formation, shows that the galaxies were much bigger than what Webb shows in infrared, which means that our assumption that galaxies start small and then grow larger over time is not the full picture. There is a lot that we don't understand. Just from this one composite image and its accompanying data, Webb is already changing the field of cosmology. But why is this? That is because there is a gap in our understanding of the early universe before the first galaxies formed. We know what happened in the universe immediately after the Big Bang for the first second. And then we know what happened a billion years after the Big Bang. The Big Bang happened about 13.8 billion years ago. That's when time and space came into being as we know it. Well, not fully. Space was quite different after the Big Bang for hundreds and thousands of years. In fact, for at least 378,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe was just fuzzy gas and it was dark. There were no stars, no galaxies, no anything. It was just protons and neutrons and the early formation of hydrogen and helium. There was no light at all. It was called the cosmic dark ages and the universe was not transparent. Even if there had been light, light could not have passed through the universe. And then about 250 million years after the Big Bang, some light started to appear. The earliest stars started to form and the universe went from opaque to transparent and there was light as there were no free electrons to scatter this light. 
the first stars formed, which became the first proper sources of light in the universe at the break of this cosmic dawn. How they formed and when they formed, allowing light to first permeate the universe is one of the biggest mysteries that Webb hopes to find some answers for. Observation of early galaxies at the time periods that Webb is looking at will give us a lot of understanding into how the universe itself evolved and how these stars and galaxies came to be. What scientists were hoping to find with the telescope were traces of clues that could explain galactic formation during these times. We've assumed when the universe came out of the dark ages, it just started to make light. But turns out it was already spinning such massive galaxies more powerful than we'd ever thought. The Webb telescope will revolutionize our understanding of the universe and how it evolved. With each new picture and data dump, we are learning years and years worth of astronomy that experts will find new insights from for decades to come.